Hi everyone, I'm Hayden Crawford from numerologist.com and today I'm going to be revealing my top 11 tips on things that you need to do before the end of 2018. Well, what a year it's been, eh? If yours has been anything like mine, you'll feel like you've been dragged through a wind tunnel backwards and then spat out face first the other side. It's been a year of change, death and regeneration for me. I don't know about you and it feels like it's absolutely flown by. I've lost relatives that have been very close to me and a beloved white cat who was 18 years old that we brought across from the UK with us when we emigrated to Australia. So what things can you do to kickstart your 2019 so that you can have the best year of your life? Number one is let in the light. We need to give old stale energy a chance to escape from our home. So open up the doors and the windows and the curtains and the blinds and everything and allow fresh light to go into the house and the fresh air to circulate and clear away all of that old stale energy that's making you feel kind of stuck and a bit sort of negative. It's really, really good if you uh, have got a really sunny day as well because the sunshine will really shed light into all corners of the room and make it feel like a different space entirely. Number two is to smudge your rooms. Now this is really effective with native American white sage. So all you have to do is light the end of it and then just blow on it gently as well until the smoke comes billowing up. Now, you can be quite generous with this. So start from the front of the house and go all the way through your house, going into all corners and even inside of the wardrobes and the cupboards and everything. And what this will do, it will kind of clear out all of the negative energies that's been stored within the home. You can always open up the doors and windows afterwards and that will allow all of that to just dissolve into thin air and go out into the outside world. It's extremely effective, this one, and it will clear the space completely, raise the vibration of the house so that you can feel a lot more relaxed. Step three is to dust and declutter. Now, go grab a mop and a bucket and a hoover and some dust and polish and make sure that you go through the entire house cleaning as you go. So start with dusting, dust every room, get rid of every single inch of dust that you can see. And then get the hoover out, go underneath the sofa, underneath any large pieces of furniture and get rid of all those air balls and all of those dead cockroaches that you haven't seen since 1936. I also then want you to mop the floors until they shine and sparkle like a diamond. Then you're gonna declutter one room at a time. You're gonna create three piles, keep, gift and trash and then you're gonna declutter the house and declutter your mind. And you'll have a fantastic time in the process. Number four is turn up your tunes. Now sound frequencies will permeate every single cell of your body in every corner of your room. So crank up the volume on your wireless speaker and allow the vibration to go through every single pore and every single cell in your body and start to dance like nobody's watching you. Even if the cat is looking at you through the corner of its eye really strangely, then just ignore it and do what's right for you. You're gonna have a blast. Step five is to bring in some greenery. Now flowers and plants are very auspicious and they cleanse and clear the air daily without you even have to think about it. They bring in happiness and joy through all the different shades of colours and they make you feel good. I always like to put mine in very auspicious places around my home so that they can be seen by everybody who comes to see me. Make sure you take off any brown leaves because that will allow room for new growth. Step six is to spritz in some colour. Now I particularly like using the Colour Mirrors Essence Sprays because they're fantastic. All different shades of colour. The Pink Angel will do the job. It'll bring in harmony into love and relationships into your home. So you can spritz that around you like that and breathe in that beautiful lemony fragrance. Now you could also use the Clear Angel of clarity and purity. What she does is she clears away stuck and stale energy. And she brings clarity to any situation so you can really see your vision clearly along the way into your 2019. Step seven 
is to cleanse your crystals. Now we have to nurture and look after our crystals if we want them to work well for us. So setting them into a bowl of purified water and putting them out in the sunlight or even in the moonlight for at least four hours is going to really help activate them. We can reset the intentions for our crystals as well by simply putting them into the crystal and then that will give them more power and strength too. You might also like to put a piece of black tourmaline into the four corners of each of the rooms in your house because black tourmaline is an energy protector and it will get rid of any negative entities that might find their way into your home. Hence, it will raise the vibration of your house and keep you feeling safe and secure. Number eight is to bathe your body. Now it's all very well and good looking after the energy within the home, but if you've neglected your body's energies, then that can seriously affect your well-being during 2019 as well. So what I like to do is to bathe in color frequencies. So I always just select a color that resonates with me and I pour the whole bottle in and I submerge my entire body into the warm water and it cleanses and clears. And it helps me to get rid of negative patterns that are caught in my cellular memory. Now, if you haven't got color mirrors bottles, you can always use crystals in your bath or Epsom salts or flower essences or even flower petals. It's a great way to kind of re-energize your whole subtle bodies and your outer causal bodies. And it will give you that sort of really relaxed feeling as the soothing warm water goes through your muscles and softens them and relaxes them. You're gonna feel fantastic. Number nine is to have a digital detox. Sorry, no, I can't do that today. I'm looking after me. What I mean by having a digital detox is making sure that you give yourself a break from your tablet, your iPhone and your computer over the entire of the festive period. Try and be present when you're having dinner with your family. They'll appreciate it. So you can involve yourself in conversations. You never know, you might get a lot out of it. It's absolutely essential, so give it a go. Just challenge yourself and see if you can at least get through Christmas dinner without picking up your phone. What happens is the electromagnetic energy that emanates from our devices really interferes with our subtle bodies and can cause us fatigue, tiredness, or even anger and overwhelm. Just do yourself a favor this new year and make sure that you do as little as you possibly can on all of your devices. Step 10 is to host a positive party. Why not invite all of your closest friends and family along to your house, which has been newly revamped with all this fresh energy and host up what's called a positive party. Now, you could actually avoid the energy vampires in your life. So anyone who makes you feel sort of down or sucks you dry when they start talking to you about their problems and never listen to yours. I only want you to really invite around the people that energize you and make you feel fantastic about yourself. You could choose a theme for this party, like an orange party, and invite people along to wear an item of clothing which is coloured orange. It can really bring a smile to your face when you see what people rock up in, and you'll have a really great time. And finally, step 11 is to set your goals. Now, it really is a fantastic time to put pen to paper and write down exactly what you're hoping to achieve by the end of 2019. You might also want to create a dream board so you can see it visually and put it somewhere that you'll see it every single day. Now, ask yourself the questions, where do you want to be by the end of 2019? and how do you think you're going to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself? And then also ask yourself, would it be okay for you to still be in exactly the same situation that you're in right now at the end of next year? Now, if the answer is no to that question, then chances are that you need to do a little bit of personal development on yourself so that you can move forward with your life. Listen, I hope you got a lot from today. I am going to be back, obviously, in the new year with some more wonderful insights for you to help you move forward with your life with ease and grace. 
I'd like you to leave a few comments in the comments section below just to explain whereabouts you're stuck in your life right now and what you're going to do to have more fun for yourself and those that you love during the silly season. I'll bye for now.